Please rise. In the beginning was the Word. In the Word was life. The Word became flesh and lived among us. of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his words be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation, and we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated.
seated. A reading from Luke chapter 1. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among men and blessed among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the litany. <clears throat> In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. For our pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. For our public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, 
let us pray to the Lord. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you brought us to the end of another day. We thank you that now we have the opportunity uh, to take this time to meditate on your word, to see in Elizabeth an example of your grace and your mercy at work in her life. We pray that by your goodness, we too might live to give you thanks and praise from the gift of the faith that you work. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Elizabeth is kind of a, uh, well, not, obviously not anonymous, but kind of a quiet character in the Bible. We don't hear a lot about her. She's only in Luke chapter 1, and we don't hear or see anything else from her at all. We don't know much about her either, but we know this. She wasn't an exemplary person, an exemplary woman of God. But what made her that way? What brought her the glory that she had in this life? You see, first of all, we know this. Elizabeth was a childless woman. The most basic blessing that the Israelites could ever have was to have a child, and hopefully many of them. In the Psalms even it says, blessed is the man who has a quiver full of children. But Elizabeth had none. It's kind of in line with so many of the Old Testament women too, isn't it? People like Sarah and Hannah. And here Elizabeth, she's denied this. First of all, it was a reproach in the, before the world. People would wonder what she had done that God would punish her in such a way. And she as herself would have to worry about her old age. Who would take care of her? There were no social programs. Social security was the gift of a, a son. One that would take care of you as you needed help as you got older. This is what she was known as, the childless woman. Even the angel Gabriel said to Mary, when he appeared to Mary, he said, if you to believe this, all you got to know is your cousin Elizabeth, the one who without a child has conceived. See, that's the gift, isn't it? The childless woman, the barren woman, well, she, she w no longer was. The Lord had worked miraculously to take away her disgrace. And that was the words Elizabeth used. To be without this child was a disgrace. And for that she was joyful. For that she was excited and happy. But notice this. She looked to the Lord. The Lord was the one who took away her disgrace. The Lord and no one else was responsible for this miracle to happen. She had not all of a sudden achieved a level of obedience or piety that suddenly God would bless her. Not at all. But the Lord had looked upon her and taken away her disgrace. What else we notice in the few things we know about Elizabeth is that she is a woman filled with joy. We see that especially in the reading that we had tonight, didn't we? She was a joyful woman. Her joy in her baby was great. Finally, that disgrace was gone. The hope for what was to be was, is within her. But she had a reason for an even greater joy. For you see, that joy was expressed when she meant to marry. And then she would cry out as she did, Blessed are you among women. She would bless both her, Mary, as well as her unborn baby. There was her joy. It wasn't merely in her son who was unborn in her, but it was in Mary and especially the unborn child within her. She was joyful because she was in the presence of her Lord. And though he was unseen, yet there she found joy. For he alone was the one had been promised from all time. The Old Testament had promised these things that the Savior would come, and now he was coming. There could be no greater joy she had, for in her little young cousin Mary, she found her Savior. 
For she, Mary, was carrying that child for her and for this world, for the forgiveness of sins. She was joyful. She was joyful for her son. She knew he was to prepare the way of the Lord, and that meant with her conception that the Savior was coming. But her great joy at that moment was in nothing else than the fact that Jesus was present. Her Savior was there. There's one last thing, too, that we've learned about Elizabeth. She was a woman who knew how to encourage. Her words to Mary encouraged Mary. Mary had left her hometown. She was in a town of around 100 people, and that was it. Gabriel had told her, evidence of your miraculous conception is found in the woman who is your aunt, or your cousin, excuse me. The woman who is without child is now pregnant. Go and see her. Mary left her hometown and the gossip that would be a part of it and all those other things in order to see her, her cousin Elizabeth. And when she got there, Elizabeth gave her encouragement. Blessed are you, blessed is, are you, for you have believed what the Lord has said will be accomplished. You see, the blessing that is there, from Elizabeth was reminding her that Mary, above all women, had this joy of being the mother of their Savior, the mother of their Lord God. And she was blessed for that. And above all else, that she never doubted what Gabriel had said to her on behalf of the Lord. And what encouragement that is. In a time of trouble and a time of anxiety that Mary without a doubt was facing, Elizabeth pointed her back to the promises and the words that God had given her. Blessed is she who has believed what the Lord has spoken. Do you see what the glory, do you see what is the beauty of Elizabeth? It's that she was a woman of faith. Everything we learn about Elizabeth in a few verses is always oriented toward God. It is always oriented so that we might see faith and trust in God despite the situation, despite all of the things that might come around and happen to her. She's a woman who took God at his word. Her husband, Zechariah, didn't, and so he was made mute. Elizabeth trusted. Elizabeth rejoiced when she saw the word of God come true for Mary as well. She was a woman of faith who, no matter what the circumstances, took God at his word. And that faith brought joy in her life. It brought joy... Well, sure, because her disgrace was taken away through the promises of God, that without a doubt brought her joy. For the very hope that every woman, every family, husband and wife had was for children, and God was bringing her that great gift. But even more joy was in her, for she knew that the conception of her son and her son's coming birth meant that her Savior was on his way. And that the hope that they had had since Genesis 3, when God had promised the Savior to crush Satan, was on its way. Her deliverance was soon to be, for her Savior was coming. Her pregnancy and her son did nothing more than point her and the world to Jesus. Did you see what this story is happening? It's about Jesus. It's about the way the Holy Spirit worked in Elizabeth as she was filled with the Spirit and could sing praises to God. I mean, without a doubt, Elizabeth is a woman of glory, a woman of great beauty. But that beauty is found, that glory is found because of the presence of God in her life. It's the presence of His grace 
to bring that word of salvation to her. It was the gifts of grace that came to her that allowed her to believe and to rejoice in her life, to encourage another young woman in her midst so that she would not become discouraged despite the adversity she might face. Woman, of the woman Elizabeth was without a doubt a model of faith and of love and service. You see, the call for us is the call of Elizabeth for our lives. It's a reminder that no matter where we find ourselves in life, God is at work. It doesn't matter if you're young in first or second grade or you're old and, and wondering how long God has given you left on this earth. God is still at work in the midst of all of this, that his word is for us all. It's not for one or two. It's not for only a special time in life or another. It's for all of our life. For we are children of God, and God is with us every moment in Jesus Christ. That is the gift that we have. God is at work in you and in me in Jesus. St. Paul talks about it, doesn't he? It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. See, that is the gift of God in grace. So we're called to that same faith. To trust in him, even as Mary did when she was told she would conceive the child, miraculously, and she did. And that Elizabeth herself trusted in that word as well, when she conceived miraculously, though in a completely different manner. But in all things, to trust and take Christ at his word. And to know that our Savior came for us for the times when we are more like Zechariah, the husband of Elizabeth, and Elizabeth herself. It also is a call for us to have the glory of Elizabeth and to be reminded that the glory of our lives is God at work. See, it isn't about what we can accomplish. It's not about what we have accomplished. For that is not why God calls us. He calls us to be his children because he has had mercy on us, because he has had pity on us. For we are people who are sinners and cannot help ourselves. Even as Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, so have we been filled with the Spirit through faith. And so we simply know that we are God's people because he has called us. The glory of our lives is the glory that God is at work in them. It's not about the people we can influence. It's not even about the people we may influence at some time in our lives. No, the glory of our lives and the life of this congregation is the same glory that Elizabeth had, and it is Jesus. For he is the one who has called us and gathered us. He is the one who has forgiven us. He is the one who accompanies us in life's hardest moments as well as in its greatest joys. The glory is found as we trust in him and his word. For no greater worship can we give than to trust Christ has died for us. And with that, to remember that his word is always good for us. The glory of Christ at work in us, even as in Elizabeth. As we speak to one another, as we encourage one another, and not just say things will work out, for the world can say that, Oprah can sing that, and 101 people can say that, but we as God's people have been called to speak the encouragement of Jesus. Blessed are you, for you have trusted in the Lord. It may be difficult and hard, but our words bring them back to Jesus. For our encouragement comes, comes only in pointing them to Christ and the promises that are true in Him alone. It's one of the funny things. We're called, really, to imitate the faith of Elizabeth. We're called to imitate the life and love and encouragement that Elizabeth shows. But we really can't always strive too far for it. It's not about an improvement plan. You know, Elizabeth's faith and Elizabeth's life are something greater than that. Elizabeth's faith and Elizabeth's life are something that God worked. 
She knew the Word of God and she trusted in that Word of God. And through that same word of the gospel, through that same promise that we are his children through faith in Christ Jesus who died for our sins, we too are people like Elizabeth. Elizabeth heard that word and she heard that promise. And that is what worked the Holy Spirit into her, into a deep trust, a deep faith, and a life of love. So the glory is simple. It's the glory of Jesus. That's the lesson we learn from Elizabeth. That's the encouragement we receive from Elizabeth. Our glory is found only in Jesus, we learn. And we're encouraged to always keep our eyes on him. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes our understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. To God alone be all glory. Amen. Please rise for prayer. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen.